A couple of weeks ago, Jagex announced on Twitter that they're going to release a news post talking about some of the more in-depth things about old-school RuneScape Mobile. So things like the data and battery usage of the app, as well as the cache size and some of the phones that they're going to be using. Well, today they finally gave us that long-awaited post. In this video, I'm going to go over a bunch of RuneScape Mobile information that Jagex has provided us and sort of organize it to help you better understand what we can expect from the app itself. So things like the new info they just released, how the app will work, and the potential future updates. Don't forget to drop a like and comment on the video if you're excited for RuneScape Mobile to come out. So as long as Jagex keeps their promise, January should be the month when the first beta invites for the app are going to be released. They announced multiple times that 2,000 people are going to be selected for the beta, so a pretty small number, but it is a beta, so nothing too out of the ordinary. That being said, with all the delays that have happened for this app so far, I wouldn't be surprised if they ended up sending out more invites or maybe only sending out 2,000 at first and then more later on. The invites will be sent out via your RuneScape in-game inbox message system and then this will be accompanied by an official email sent to the email address that you provided in your beta application, so your app and Play Store account. And then they're both going to have matching codes so you know it's gonna be a legitimate form of communication from them. They are most definitely going to announce on Twitter and Facebook, which I believe are their two most active social media platforms that they have sent out the beta invites. So if you guys get anything before they announce that they sent out the invites, it's most likely a phishing attempt and they're just trying to get your information. So again, please don't get hacked. Make sure it's not a phishing attempt and wait for JX to officially announce that they sent out the invites. We might as well start off with the new news post as there is a lot of great information there. The only thing that is a bit iffy at the moment is the data usage section because they keep saying that really when you're playing this on your phone, it really just depends on your real world situation. There is no set amount of data that this app is going to be using per hour. So if you're in an area, obviously with horrible coverage, you're gonna be using up more data per hour. If you're in an area with great coverage, you're gonna be using up less per hour. So it really depends on you know your situation that you're in in the real world. So when talking about the size of the old school application itself, it says that one of the key aims of old school mobile is accessibility. We know that a phone bloated by unnecessarily large apps hurts performance and causes huge annoyance. And they say that the old school app is roughly 30 megabytes in size, which seems insanely tiny to me. That's that's very, very small. If I look at my phone on the iPhone storage, and if you have, I have an iPhone, if you guys have, you know, an Android, you can probably check there in the settings as well. I mean, my fantasy football app is larger than this. So that's pretty crazy to me, but I'm sure that when you download the app and you have all this cache that's downloaded as well and all these settings downloaded, I'm sure it's gonna take up a bit more, but the fact that it's that small is pretty impressive. So when this news post was first released, they announced that the old school mobile app would currently use on average 103 megabytes of data per full hour of gameplay, which seemed like quite a bit to me when I first saw it. And then a couple hours later, Mod Atlas or Jagex Titan on Twitter, one of the engine people at Jagex told everybody that the 100 megabyte quote in the blog is actually wrong. That number was extrapolated from a faulty test that was running the app from an empty cache. So the actual data usage is far lower than this. And that keyword in there is far. So apparently it's a lot smaller than this. They still have not released this number. So they probably will announce it on Twitter or release it on the old school website once they have an exact number for you. But again, they always point back to the fact that it really just depends on your real world situation. So it depends on your coverage, depends on your signal. It's going to vary. The old school app will on average cause your battery to drain at the rate of between 8% and 12% per hour whilst you're playing. This relatively low rate of drain insurance that even the longest commutes will be made bearable. These tests were done on a Samsung S8 and a Razer phone, so some relatively new phones that have been released, and they're going to continue to test them on different types of phone and relay the information whenever possible. Not really a surprise they're doing these tests on new phones just because that's sort of what they expect everybody to have these days, but don't worry, if you still have an older phone and you applied for the beta, you probably actually may get an invite seeing as they want to test this old school app on all types of phones. So if you're one of the few with an older version of a phone, you probably have a better chance of getting selected. So you can look forward to that. They will constantly be updating us with better information regarding the mobile app, you know, data usage and battery usage on the old school Twitter, Facebook, and old school website. So make sure to follow all of those if you want constant updates on that. The app will run on two different operating systems, Android and iOS. So nothing really surprising there, seeing as most people have a phone that runs on either of those two operating systems. Old School Mobile is going to be released before RuneScape 3 Mobile, since RuneScape 3 is obviously a much larger game with much more content and arguably better graphics. So it still may be a while before we see that released. Both apps, however, are going to be totally free on the App Store, which is amazing on Jagex's part because they could have easily charged us money for this. It probably will keep a lot and cost a lot to you know keep up the app. So I think their goal at the end of the day is to have all the existing players download the app right away when it comes to the app store and that will hopefully boost it up into the top list you know the most played free games of the day or of the week or of the month 
hopefully that'll be up there and the new people will see the app, download it, and start playing as well. And that'll bring in a lot of new players to the game. I think that's the main reason they want to keep it free. You do not need to make a new account for this. You can play on your current existing accounts on the old school version or RuneScape version on your phone. You can't make a mobile only account. Well, you can technically, but there's no option to announce that you have a mobile only account. All right, calm down. Iron Man. And there also won't be any mobile only worlds in the game either. They're trying to keep this as open as possible. It's simply the RuneScape game, the old school game on your phone. There will be equal priority between the two. So Android and iOS will both receive the same amount of attention. And based on the beta applications, I'm guessing they're going to select a thousand people who run, you know, Android and a thousand people who run iOS on their phones. They can't really know yet which operating system will have more players. I mean, they do have the beta application, so they probably have an estimate, but that's for the current players of the game. And that's not for new players. They won't 100% sure know which operating system will have more players until the app is actually released. You will of course need Authenticator because account safety always comes first and the fact that it's an app on your phone and old school is now an app on your phone means it's pretty damn convenient. Accessories like Bluetooth keyboard should work as well. However, some things like Bluetooth mice are a bit iffy. They can't really know for sure how everything will function since there are so many phone and tablet accessories these days. So you're just gonna have to sort of test it out for yourself when it comes out. Now, one of the main questions people have regarding the app is, what if I get a phone call when I'm doing something important like killing Jad? Now, first off, I'd recommend doing those important things on your computer, but if you happen to be doing them on your phone and you do happen to get a phone call, then there is apparently going to be a suspend and resume feature. Now, that's all they said on the matter, so I can't really explain it further, but I am curious as to how this is going to work. The suspend and resume feature makes sense itself, but the fact that this game is a live MMORPG on your phone and it has players not only on you know other phones but also on computers as well around the world how is that going to look for those players when somebody has suspended the game on their phone you know is everything going to be frozen mid-air it most definitely will not because that's never how the game and never will be how the game works will the game only suspend in certain instances i'm guessing maybe that makes more sense since it's an instance and nobody else can be at that instance with you it's just you alone that's something i don't really have an answer for if you guys do know more about this if you know more about you know software programming app programming please let me know what you think will happen in the comment section below because i'm sort of stuck for all of you console players out there, I actually have some pretty surprising news for you. Jagex have absolutely no plans to release the game on console and probably never will. Another big topic that has to be discussed is botting. So botting is apparently a very big thing on both types of operating systems, so Android and iOS. A lot of apps apparently have issues with them, not necessarily the gaming apps, I'd say, but more the messaging and dating apps. They have a lot of bots on them, of course. Jagex did mention on their live stream where they talked about mobile that they are aware of the use of bots and they are taking a lot of precautionary steps to make sure that botting won't be a thing on the app. However, they can't really talk too much about what they're doing and they can't really give out that much information because, you know, otherwise they're giving away technically their secrets if you want to put it like that. I'm sure that botting will be there, but hopefully it won't be too big of an issue. Another great thing that they announced is that everything is open on mobile. Nothing in-game is locked for you. So everything that you can do on your computer version, you can also do on the mobile version of RuneScape, which is crazy to me, but I find it awesome. The interface is going to scale based on the tablet and phone size. So just because you have a larger tablet or a larger phone, or just because you have a smaller tablet, or smaller phone doesn't mean you're gonna have black bars on the side. It's gonna scale based on the phone size, which is really nice. So a controversial topic that they also talked about was that there are no plans to nerf tablet OP methods like darts. If you guys don't know, darts are a method where you just sort of spam click on the two items that you need. You get lots of XP and it's really that simple. Instead of clicking, you're tapping on your phone. They do not plan to nerf any of those methods, but they did mention that if it becomes an issue, it will be addressed. I believe it was a friend who made a video like a year ago about using his tablet to spam darts or something like that, and he got crazy XP per hour, and I think he ended up getting like a, a two-day ban or something, which ended up you know, being addressed, but I am curious to see if things like EHP and if other methods actually end up being extremely overpowered on the phone and they will have to address these methods. They also have no plans to add a new tutorial for mobile, but they will update the current tutorial island to include mobile features. It's pretty exciting when you think about it, the fact that there's going to be mobile content, mobile instructions on the RuneScape tutorial, something nobody really thought would be possible even like four or five years ago. That's pretty awesome. They also talked about how you could control your player and the client itself. It's pretty much exactly what you'd expect it be. A left click is just a simple touch on your client somewhere the right click they were not totally sure what they're going to do with it but it's most likely going to be something like holding down on your screen for two to three seconds and then dragging down to select zooming is just pinching your finger 
Camera movement is something like a two-finger swipe to the left or right or up or down or whatever. And then something like shift clicking, which is a bit more complicated, would technically be a drop mode on your inventory. So potentially clicking on your pouch on your you know screen and then there's a drop mode there. You click that and then click everything in your inventory and you can drop it like that. Now that isn't 100% confirmed. That's just something they talked about during the mobile live stream. But when the beta gets released, we'll see what they end up choosing. Now that's pretty much everything they've mentioned so far in news posts, in live stream. That's everything I could collect. If you guys have any more information about the app itself and maybe something people don't know about, please make sure to comment it in the comment section, of course, below. I have a couple of things they mentioned as well for potential post-launch features. So when the app gets released, something they can look into adding after it's released. Something like a fingerprint login, which is a lot more common nowadays. You can just go to the you know app itself, you're on the login stream, put in your fingerprint, and boom, you're in-game. It's a bit more controversial, but it's something that could potentially work. It's something I love to see. I mean, typing on the phone, I hate it. Some people love typing on the phone. My fingers are chubby, even though I mean, I'm a pretty lanky, skinny dude, but really bad at typing. And then things like notifications are being talked about as well. So grand exchange offers, streams going live, farming runs. You know, you get a message on your phone saying like, hey, your herbs have grown, or hey, you sold this on the grand exchange. I'm sure that'll make its way into the game. This, of course, all will be, you know, toggleable. You can't just always have it come to your phone. You can turn it on and off. Those are just some of the ideas that they had during the live stream. So we probably won't see them when they're released into the app store, but potentially when the app is officially released, we'll see a couple more nice quality of life updates come to the app itself. Anyways, guys, that's all I have for you this video. Thank you guys for watching this far. If you did, I'm extremely excited for mobile to come out. If I do end up getting the beta invite, I will try to provide as many videos for you as possible and as much information as possible on the app app itself. Thank you guys for watching. Hope to see you next time. Have a good one and peace. Wow.